Okay, today we're looking at distance time graphs. <clears throat> so the graph that I've got sketched out on here, we're just going to look at each section and sort of analyze what's going on. So because we have distance on the side and time on the bottom, what you got to be able to do with these graphs is understand, okay, what's happening as time is going on where distance is either we're getting further and further away or closer to where we started. So point A on this graph is considered like home base and we're going to get further and further away from that. So if we were to look at section AB on the graph, that would be our distance is going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like we're going up to 4, and our time is going 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. So for that AB section, we've covered 4 meters and 4 seconds. So just by looking at a graph, if we calculate the rise over run, what we're going to see is the slope of the line is rise over run, which is, in this case, would be the, the rise would be the change in the distance, and the run would be the change in the time. Okay, so because of that, if you look at that and you compare that to our formula yesterday, basically that's our velocity formula. Our velocity is distance over time, so therefore the slope is our velocity. So if we calculate the slope, we can calculate the velocity. So for this first section, our velocity then is change in distance is 4, change in time is 4, so we'd have 4 meters per 4 seconds, so our velocity would be 1 meters per second. So for that first section on the graph, we would have 1. 1 meters per second would be our velocity or our speed for that section. Okay, let's look at section BC. So on the same grid, what's happening from section B to C. So our distance isn't changing, right? We're staying at a distance of 4, but our time has went, gone from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we've increased our time, but we haven't changed our distance. So using slope, you could think of it as 4 minus 4, which would be 0, divided by 4 seconds, or just think of it as being a flat line. We have no slope, therefore it's 0. So from B to C, we're not moving, so it's zero. And then from Z C to D, if we check that one, okay, so B to C is no movement, zero velocity. Okay, so C to D now, if we look at that, we can see we're going up again, so that means our distance is getting further and further away. But if we compare that to the first section, it looks like it's a steeper line. So using steeper line means steeper slope, which should mean it's going faster. So let's do the calculation again. So we're going from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right, that would be 11 high if we just count by ones. And in the uh, time direction, we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this number is at 8. 9, 10, 11 to there. So if we do our slope calculation for that one, our rise would be from final to initial would be 11 minus 4. And our time is 11 minus 8. So we get 7 over 3 which would be approximately 2.3 meters per second. Okay, so then for that section, our speed is 2.3 meters per second. And like I said, if you just look at the steepness of the line, that does make sense because it's steeper, so it should be going faster. Now if we calculate, do the same thing for D to E, we should see that we should have a number again, right? It's still sloped, so we should have some sort of speed, but it's sloped downwards, so what happens when we do the calculation? If we just do the exact same calculation we did before, but use our new numbers, so we're going from 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we're going up to 16 seconds, and our distance, we're going from 11 down to 0. So if we do change in distance, remember you've got to go from final minus initial, so our velocity in this case would be 0, minus 11 meters, and our time would be 16 minus 11. 
So we end up getting negative 11 over 5, which will work out to negative 2.2. Okay, so just by using the formula we get a negative, but it also makes sense that if you think of the distance, we're starting at 11 meters away and we're going right back to where we started, so we're going in the negative direction. So in terms of distance time graphs, a straight line that's slanted is speed. A faster speed would be a bigger slope, a slower speed would be a flatter slope, a flat line is not moving, and then a negative slope just means you're changing directions and going back to where you had. If you had a, a graph where the slope was curved, so let's suppose our graph did something like this, a curved line then means our distance is getting bigger and bigger over that amount of time, so a curved line means acceleration. Okay. We're not going to do any calculations off these graphs to calculate the acceleration. We're just going to know that if it's curved, it's going to be an acceleration. It's speeding up or slowing down or whatever. So we'll worry about those a little bit later on. Um, we're going to look at some other questions, and then we'll do, I'll do velocity time graphs in a separate lesson. So that's it for today. Go through the examples and the other questions that are in the Moodle. See ya.